Okay, Jane, I think we can start. <laughs> to this service of virtual morning prayer from Emmanuel Church on the Hill. The bulletin was sent out yesterday, so uh, you, that has the entirety of the service in it. Or for those of you following along in the prayer book, we will begin with the opening invocation on page 77 and then move quickly to the invitatory on page 80. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Come, let us, adore. let us adore him. Alleluia. The Yubilate, as printed in your bulletin. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come into God's presence with a song. Know this, the Lord, the Lord is God, the one who made us and to whom we belong. We are God's people, the sheep of God's pasture. Enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving. Go into these courts with praise. Give thanks to God and call upon the name of the Lord. For the Lord is good, whose steadfast love is everlasting and whose faithfulness endures from age to age. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 1. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit, to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, 
men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This ends the first reading. Let us say together Canticle Q, a song of Christ's goodness by St. Anselm of Canterbury. Jesus, as a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us and with pure milk you feed us. Jesus, by your dying, we are born to new life. By your anguish and labor, we come forth in joy. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness, we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your love and tenderness, remake us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness. For the beauty of heaven, may your love prepare us. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here ends the reading. Let us say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. 
Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Here ends the lesson. Well, I chose this reading, these readings in particular for the Ascension, even though the Ascension was actually next Thursday or last Thursday, I mean, um, and brought it here to Sunday. Um, it's a movable feast. Ascension, we can move around and move it up to Sunday. The reason is it's such an odd little uh, holiday, feast day, and it tends to get overlooked. We tend to kind of breeze past it and ignore it. And yet it's one of the most important um, feasts of the year. It's considered one of the big ones. And I think one of the reasons we ignore it is because people aren't exactly sure what to do with it. I mean, Jesus ascends into heaven. And you hear in these readings, Luke saying that, you know, he kind of lifts up into the clouds. And um, if you Google after we've finished here, uh, um, Google say ascension and art or something, ascension, Jesus, something lovely, um, you will get these wild pictures. And some of them are very glorious and wonderful, but also you'll get some art that is a little bit goofy. And you'll see Jesus's little feet dangling out of a cloud. And it's just not the vision you want of Jesus, the last vision you want of Jesus. You want some lovely vision of Jesus. And the Ascension sometimes doesn't leave us with that visual. So here we are with these, this visual of Jesus floating up in a cloud to heaven and leaving the disciples gape-mouthed on the ground. And I assume probably footprints there. And they're not very happy about it. And then on top of it all, we have this theology that has developed around it a little bit. And you heard it a little bit in that Ephesians reading, this... Um, you know, this immeasurable greatness of his power who, for those of us who believe and God put his power to work in Christ and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above the all rule and authority and power and dominion. And in all of that, we began to hear a little bit of uneasy memories of the church's oppression and tyranny. And that's why I left out the psalm, because the psalm was all about Jesus being Christ, or Jesus being the king and over the kingdom and all kinds of visions of um, that we just don't want in our heads. So be between the psalm and kingdoms and Jesus being king and then the tyranny part and oppression, I just thought we're not doing the psalm. We're just going to leave this out for today and we're going to do the Ephesians reading because the Ephesians reading manages to redeem itself there in the middle. And, you know, it, it redeems itself there and I hope you heard it because Paul talks about hearing with the, or, and seeing with the eyes of our hearts. He talks about the eyes of our hearts. And it's one of the most wonderful visions we can have of what we're supposed to be doing here on earth when Jesus leaves us, so to speak. But of course, he hasn't really left us, has we? Has he? We're, we still have him with us. And we know what we're supposed to do, just like the disciples did. He stands there right before he leaves them and tells them exactly what they're supposed to do. He kind of reminds them of everything he said and everything that they're supposed to do. And then he tells them that shortly they're going to be clothed with the power from on high. And do you think they had any idea what they meant? 
I don't think he, they had any idea what he meant or what he was talking about. But somehow, maybe this time, they believed him. And then he floats off and leaves them there. Now, what do we make of this, this idea? This is the other problem with ascension. How do you make this about today? How do we make this even mildly relevant to our lives today, this ascension? I, for me, it has always been about letting go, about letting go. It, Jesus has to let go of us. He has to let go of the world. He has to, has to let go of the disciples, doesn't he? You know, he's been working with them for years now, and they haven't exactly proven themselves to be very good students, have they? And they haven't really stood by him in the way one would hope they had, they could. And now he has to leave them. He has to go away. And we know he has to go away, don't we? He can't stay and hold their hand. And he can't stay here on earth. He's got to go. And if you think that he should have stayed with us, let me talk to you about how you have to let go. And you will now understand what I mean. Think of the things you had to let go of throughout your life. I mean, the easy one right off the bat is your kids, right? I mean, right now I can see kids sitting on laps, but eventually you're going to have to let go of those kids and send them off to college or even kindergarten at this point. I mean, they've got to go, right? Or if you don't have kids, haven't you had a project or a job or a relationship that you had to let go of because it was the best thing? You had to let that something go to let it grow and become what it needed to become. You had done everything you could for it, everything you could ever do. You had given it all your all, and now you had to let it go. And it's particularly poignant, I think, for me with my kids, because I had done everything I could possibly do, and they still could not clean a bedroom. They still could not really cook a meal, and they still were grounded for the vast majority of their high school. And the idea that I was going to drive them to high school or to college, I mean, and leave them there thinking that they were somehow going to be able to feed themselves and clean their room, or find clean clothes, clean their, I mean, no, it wasn't going to happen. But I had to trust that somehow everything that I had done was going to somehow bubble up, right? Somehow, some way. I mean, one of my kids just wrote me recently and said to me that she felt that she had been training for this pandemic because she had been grounded for most of high school. And this is the kind of children I left at college, you know? I mean, one of them, the house had been broken into and the police thought that the house had been ransacked. One of the rooms had been ransacked. I had to tell him, no, it's not rent. That's the child's room. That's how it looks all the time. These are the children I left at college and drove away sobbing, sobbed for the whole drive home. But you have to do this, don't you? Or when you retire, I, it was a wrench. It was absolutely a wrench, but I knew it was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do. And we all know these things. We all know this. And that's what Jesus was doing too. And that's what the ascension is about for me. Now, I think that there's a thousand things you could think of when the ascension, in talking about the ascension. I think you can find all kinds of things to, all kinds of meaning in this. And that's why it's such a glorious story and why I love to preach on it. But I think for me today and for us today, why the ascension is so important is about letting go. And I think it would be particularly lovely if a whole lot of people out there in the world could let go of control right now, wouldn't it? We can't control what's going on out there, right? There's this virus we can't control. 
And we're going to have to kind of let go of some stuff, like the ability to move around the way we'd like. We got to let go of all of kinds of things for the greater good. And it's all about that. There's ways of taking this and using it about the way we think about what's happening around us right now and also just our lives in general. So that's why I love the Ascension and why I love to imagine Jesus with his little feet dangling in the sky. And I think that he was miserable about leaving too. I think it was really hard for him to go. Luke says he went out to Bethany to go that he took the, the disciples out to Bethany. And I've said this before, he loved Bethany. That's where his best friends lived. And he went out there for a reason. I think they probably went out there and had a big party. And then he took them out, said goodbye and went away. It was his favorite place. And I think it was a horrible wrench for him. He had to leave, he was fully human and fully divine. Imagine. Imagine leaving behind the people he loved, the people he cared about, the people he worried about. So here we are, <clears throat> left behind in a most wonderful way. And we're doing a pretty good job of it. I know it doesn't seem like it sometimes, but actually, we've done a pretty good job of it because the church is all over the world. And we're doing swell in a whole lot of ways. And you're doing swell in a whole lot of ways. So what we have to do now is remember whenever it gets tough that we have been given this really remarkable ability to see with the eyes of our hearts. Amen. in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended and to the dead. dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, ascended far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. Mercifully give us faith to perceive that, according to his promise, he abides with his church on earth, even to the end of the ages. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, we rejoice and give thanks for the blessing and privilege of gathering as your people. May the new Easter fire burn throughout the church around the world that we may give witness to your resurrected life. We pray especially for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and for Susan and Jennifer, our bishops. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for our troubled and broken world, for victims of plague and pestilence, terrorism and war, hunger and illiteracy, and for those who are oppressed and imprisoned. May your compassion and presence be comfort and light in the dark. Give our elected leaders and leaders of all nations wisdom in their decision-making, that the common good of our human family may be achieved and each person's dignity be respected. We pray for our leaders, especially Donald, our president, Ralph, our governor, and Justin, our mayor, and all who govern and hold authority in our nation 
I invite your prayers for the world, our country, and our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for all who are in need or trouble. We pray for those who are ill, those in mourning, those who are frightened, struggling through transitions. We remember especially those on our prayer, parish prayer list. Nancy, Dick, Mike, Lucy, Ted, Catherine, Diane, Bruce, Aggie, Natalie, Joan, and Anne. Let us pray for all others known to us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Glorious God, we rejoice with our seminarians, Stephen Crippen, Esther Kramer, Sam Sheridan, Suresh Kumar Shantakumar, all of whom graduated with honor from seminary and will be serving in your church. May your spirit ever enliven and guide, guide them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, welcome into your peace those who have died. Silently or aloud, we name all those we remember before God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember all of those who have died in the service of our country, those known to us or unknown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Transcendent God, you remain with us. Though we cannot gather as church and we do not have the comfort of your communion, but we gather nevertheless to offer our prayers, our praise, and thanksgiving. We ask that this service today with its delights and limits will honor you. May we, when our church doors reopen, burst through with the zeal of Pentecost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of global pandemic, O oh God, we hold before you our fear, our confusion, our sense of disruption, anger, and hope. We pray for healing for all those who are suffering from COVID-19. We pray for those recovering. We pray for those who have died. May their memory be a blessing to those in mourning. We pray for all who are caring for those suffering from this disease, as well as the researchers and public health officials across nations. We pray for those suffering economically, for students whose studies have been disrupted, for those most vulnerable to this disease. Give us ears to hear them when they call to us for help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks 
for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you, you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Well, it is good and it is a blessing to see all of you this morning as we gather for this virtual service. As always, I give thanks to so many who are working behind the scenes to make this possible. One announcement concerns uh, an upcoming change in our worship starting next Sunday. We have uh, permission and we'll plan to begin again streaming from the chapels. We plan to use both chapels and uh, merge them on our video feed along with continuing readers from home and intercessors. Uh, one of the challenges, as you're no doubt aware, has been trying to incorporate music. Um, and this is nothing against Jane, and thanks for her efforts, but sometimes the piano has not come across uh, well across the airways. We hope that starting uh, broadcasting and her playing from Emmanuel Chapel next week, uh, it should come across in a much clearer fashion. We're going to try it that way. And the officiant will be leading from Zabriskie Chapel. And as I say, others will be helping to lead from their homes. So it's going to be a, a wide-ranging and wide-spreading effort. And we'll, we'll see how it works. Let us conclude our worship now. But I do invite you, if you're able, to stay afterwards for coffee hour and to share a bit of what you're up to and, dare I say, what God is up to. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good job, President. <laughs>